Hello, my friends. Today's topic is very serious one. It's a story about the fear and worry. But let's start with a funny story from this morning, which started as a very scary story last night. So yesterday we ordered in food because of the quarantine situation and I ate and I felt while I was eating that there was something inside, something like chili pepper that I'm not allowed to eat because I have very severe food allergies and I was already starting to panic and freak out and I told my boyfriend let me go and take a medication immediately because I feel I'm gonna like faint during the night. So I took my regular pills for my stomach uh, problem that I have and during the night I started having problems. I was shaking, I was in really bad pain, I haven't slept almost nothing and when I did fall asleep I had horrible dreams, basically nightmares and I woke up with tears in my eyes so it was that bad which is funny and good to know because if you are having nightmares frequently it means that you have uh, also probably some uh, digestion issues because they are usually the reason why we have nightmares, we are processing food during the night. I usually don't eat after 5 p.m. because of that reason, but a lot of people that don't have such a messed up digestion like me don't have that problem, so they don't know that maybe they are uh, actually having nightmares because of sugar that they ate before bed or something like that. But let me go back to my story. So I wasn't sleeping, I was like half awake, half in trying to fall asleep and I woke up this morning and I went to the bathroom to wash my teeth and to basically just wake up somehow. I wash my teeth and I take a look at the mirror and of course I have like under eye bags which is normal because I haven't slept, I was under a lot of stress last night but I check my teeth and I check my tongue and my tongue is pitch black. I'm not kidding. It was like dark as a night, like dark, 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 like pitch black. Like, And in my head, I was scared and I was worried for a second. I was like, shit, because all my friends that I know that start a story with my leg or my foot or my finger was black usually ended up in a horrible situation. So when I saw my whole tongue is pitch black, this was the first thing that came to my mind in, in like millisecond. The thought that came after that was, Jovana, stop it here. You have no idea what is happening here. Do not panic. You're just going to make the situation worse. You're going to start having an anxiety attack and you don't even know if this is anything serious. You don't have pain now. You didn't sleep at all the last night. So calm down and chill out and sit down and start to figure out what could have happened. So I start googling and of course I send the pics of the black tongue to my friends who are <laughs> doctors and I saw what was the problem in the first hour. So last night I took a medication Peptobismol and that medication has a bismuth which is a common ingredient in a lot of these over-the-counter gastrointestinal medications. And when that medication reacts with sulfur, which is in our mouth, it can make our tongue pitch black. And I didn't see this on the packaging, so I didn't know. I wasn't expecting this. And I was so scared. But then when I saw that, I, I was like, okay, good, good, good. Now, you know, I can proceed with my day. And then I started the journaling, of course, <laughs> whatever <laughs> happens, I have to write it down. And what I wrote down first is that I'm so proud of myself because this is the first, not the first, but maybe in yeah, maybe the third time that I did not freak out when something uh, health-wise happened because I had really traumatic experiences with health since a little girl with my mother and my brother in severe conditions, like fighting for their life. So after that, my own tumor surgery. So I've been through shit when it comes to health and the only fear I have in this world is regarding health. Nothing else, like nothing else. People can like, I don't know, hit me, laugh at me, joke, mess. I, I, I don't, I just doesn't get to me as the health stuff. 
And so that that is why I was so proud of myself because I know somebody else maybe who never had any serious health conditions, they are probably go- would be laughing when they saw like a black tongue, like, oh, look at this, it's so funny, blah, blah, what is this? But for me, my first thought is like, okay, dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. This is it, like, it's just a matter of time, I'm just gonna, you know, collapse. And then my next thought was like, shut up, Jovana, shut up. Google it, ask a friend, shut up, don't go to the worst case scenario. And as I said, this is one of the rare times that it actually worked out. So I want to talk a little about a little bit about fear and worry because I took some stats uh, from the internet and I want to share them with you. They're so inspirational and they're like call to action to our mind when we are in fear. First of all, what I want to say is that fear is just a feeling we make up when we think certain thoughts. It's not a fact, it's a feeling. So that means we can change it if we learn how to use our mind and how to create new thoughts that we are safe and that we are able to handle whatever happens. Fear is basically just there to threaten us and to extort the future joy of our life and the future happiness and to make us feel scared and play small. And this is something that women are facing daily. And that is why I feel even more the desire to talk about it. Because you cannot work your live your life purpose and work basically what you want to do in life if you let fear dominate your mind, thoughts and decisions. And the most important thing to know is that fear is basically all bullshit. It's all our projections. It's all our mind trying to warn us to make us feel that we are in control, which we are fucking not. We were never in control of anything. So fear is fake. That is my first message. And now let me read some stats that are going to make you think and reconsider when you are scared or worried uh, again. First stat, 40% of the shit we worry about daily will never happen. Think about that. Damn, like so much wasted, wasted brain juice. Second statistic says 30% of all the fears and worries that we go through during the day are in the past and it cannot be helped. So basically we are just wasting time or procrastinating with this one. Third one, 12% of our daily worry and fear involve a fear of other people that are completely not our business and that we cannot have any influence. So this is also a waste of our time. 10% of our daily fear and worry is related to the uh, sickness that we or our family or friends have. And these 10% are both included real and imaginary. And I mean, probably more of them are imaginary. And only 8% of what we worry about and fear will ever happen. Like, really, guys, do you understand how much brain juice we are wasting on daily basis on fear and worry? We need to stop that shit now. You need to ask help. Like, I asked help when I was so scared for health of my family. I went to psychotherapy and that helped me immensely because I did not have any friend to talk to that could relate to what I was going through. And secondly, I didn't want to bother my friends. And thirdly, my friends are not professionals and they would not be able to listen like a psychologist does. So please, if you are now worried or in fear, please don't go through that yourself because it can make you very depressive and paralyzed and freaked out for no reason. It will make you stuck and you're not helping. You're not controlling by worrying. Another useful thing that I learned in my psychologist is to say, not to say I'm afraid because that makes us feel that your whole body and person and like everything is afraid. Say a part of me is afraid of blah, blah, blah. And this made a big difference in my life as well, because when I used to say, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, it was basically like my mantra, like affirmation to call in shit, you know? And now when I have some fear or when I'm upset over something, I just say to my boyfriend or somebody that I trust, listen, a part of me is 
afraid or a part of me is scared, but I'm going to do it anyways. Because it makes me feel empowered, you know? It's not like I'm afraid and that's it. No, it's like a part of me is scared, but there is always that but, we're going to do it, you know? So also useful uh, exercise that my psychologist gave me was uh, to write down all the uh, things that I'm worried about. So basically a worry list. So I wrote down back then uh, health and safety of my family and things, things like that. And then she said, ask yourself for all of those things. Is that anything which is in your control? And the answer was no. And she also said to ask myself, is this problem real or imaginary? And yeah, even though there was um, a circumstance there that some health conditions were there, uh, present, the doctor said it, it's on paper, but again, the storytelling in my head, which was doom and gloom, was absolutely not truth and fact. It was storytelling in my very scared mind going through the darkest places so it was not truth and even in that horrible state of mind i could absolutely understand that and the third thing she told me to write down is is there any action that i can do to help and the only action i knew that i could do to help is to manage my thoughts better to manage my mind so i can be there composed and not freak out when everyone else is freaking out Another a few tips that I can give you because I was struggling with this for a long time in my life due to some life circumstances and it is to have a few friends that love you unconditionally that you can always call and ask for support anytime during the day or night to basically just vent and to talk without them judging and interpreting and just jumping to cut you off. So have these friends. If you don't have these friends, find a mentor or find a psychologist, somebody that you trust so you can ask yourself what would they do, what would they say, what would they tell me in a situation like this. Another thing that helped me immensely when I was going through panic attacks and running out of breath, I I even fainted once, was to describe the feeling and to try to put it on paper. Like uh, when I feel myself that I'm going to panic about something it is usually the first sign is i'm not breathing properly the second sign is my heart starts beating and my chest is like tight tight tighter and then all my blood and everything is like rushing you know and my hands and my feet are cold so that is the second where i start describing on paper oh look this is happening it's like uh, i'm an outside observer not a person going through the situation which also sometimes this is not applicable but it can also help a lot another exercise that i also got from the psychologist was to count to four so uh, inhale and count one two three four inside your head obviously because you are trying to inhale into your belly not into your chest into your belly like one two three four and then hold it for four seconds and then exhale it for four seconds why is it important to hold the breath to signal to your body that you are safe that there is enough air that everything is fine and also another thing that helped me a lot is to write down five Uh, things um, like five questions like uh, let's say it's an emergency and you you have to ask yourself basically if it's a fear about some situation or or let's give a stupid example you have a public speech and you're scared and you ask yourself okay why am I scared five why basically it's like why am I scared I'm scared I'm gonna embarrass myself okay why am I scared about embarrassing myself because I don't want people to laugh at me why do you not want people to laugh at you because I know how it feels and I cried a lot when I was elementary school then you say okay but you're no longer in elementary school what's the worst that can happen why would these people laugh at you they're there to support you to learn something new and you see what was the point you know basically you're trying to talk to your scared child brain from an adult point of view. And to uh, close this subject, because I could talk about this for like five hours, I was struggling with this fear since I was a little girl about uh, the people I love and their health. And the thing that helped me uh, a lot is a thing that I les- uh, lesson that I learned from my mentor, Brooke Castillo, and she says life is 50-50 and you need to accept that to have a healthy life and happy life. And that means that all the 
bad feelings that we are trying to escape are basically the currency to our growth and dreams. And I know that if I haven't been through so much shit and struggle in my life, especially as a child growing up, I would not be able to create the business and the impact I have today. So I'm grateful that I was able to go through the discomfort, worry, deprivation, failure, and to all of those negative emotions like anxiety, depression, insecurity, rage, anger, dissatisfaction with life to go to the other side because I know how it feels to be in a really bad place mentally and health-wise in your brain and in your body. And I know that if even if, if, if it happens that I have to go through that again, I can do it because it doesn't have to be easier. I've got it, you know. And I wish to encourage you by this to try to journal about your fears and worries and to realize that majority of them are just stories in your head and they will never ever actually come to life. And if you try to avoid these emotions that I've mentioned before, you will never be able to live a full life because you can't have just joy without worry and pain. And if you try to avoid these emotions, you're probably going to and just increase your suffering and go into overeating, addiction, over drinking, and the other behavior disorders that happen when we are not able to fully feel all of our feelings. This is not easy. It is not pain, pain free, but it is worth it. Because on the other side is a full person who is capable to feel any emotion and the person that doesn't have to eat an emotion and doesn't have to go out and doesn't have to hide from it. It's just a person that can fully sit with it and be grateful that she is still able to process it because that just means that she is alive. Thank you for listening and I'm sorry if this is such a hard topic and it made you upset tonight but I really had to talk about this because this morning uh, situation with my black tongue which is now fine made me realize how much of our fear and worry are just stupid storytelling. <laughs>